So I, I'm videotaping myself so that uh, I'm famous. No. Uh, I'm videotaping it because I feel like this project can be tough on people, especially people who are out. And uh, if someone comes in and they're like, I really don't know what to do, they can sit there for a period and you know watch my demo again. So it's kind of for those people. Um, but I won't be putting it on YouTube or anything like that. OK. How many pounds of clay am I going to weigh out? Three. How did you guys know that? And because you're awesome. So these scales are over here. Make sure that they're at zero. Okay. Sometimes they start screwing up and they go to two or three. And then um, you'll only be weighing out one or two pounds of clay. So it's at zero. Alejandro, you can help me. How many pounds of clay is that? Three. Who's the man? You know, if, you, if you're that enthusiastic, you'll probably watch the whole demo without falling asleep. Okay? Now, I want to I either mix this clay up by wedging, or I want to block it up. No matter what, you need to do one or the other. Okay? If you recall, wedging, you put the clay on the table, you hold your hands on the side. What's going to happen if the clay is kind of hard, it's very difficult to wedge. If it's hard, I can have people over here. I can have some over there if they want. They're all right there. All right. Hold your hands on the side. Push. Bring it back. Hands on the side. Push with your palms. Bring it back. Yeah, this is the only class that did this today. I, I you know, you guys have your moments. Your enthusiasm. He's fighting that sleep. So you're, you're pushing it. I'm not folding it back. I have my hands on the side. I'm pushing in, pushing in, pushing in, and this is mixing up the clay. Now, you don't really do it in the middle of the table. You really do it here, but I was trying to make sure everybody can see. So when you get in a rhythm, it's going to mix quite a bit. And this is, we're using this clay that's in the bucket if there's clay to use. If not, we'll get a fresh bag. It would make it very easy for you if you took the wire and cut, and it says it on your thing, block up three pounds of clay or cut a two to three inch slab off of this. So it would be good if you cut two to three inches straight across. That's not straight over here and cut it straight off, and then you can start hitting it from there, that would be good for you. But we have to use that clay in the box because, you know, we don't have a ton of clay. Actually, we do have a ton of clay, but we don't have so much clay that we can um, keep throwing it in the bucket and not using it. So wedge it a little bit if you can. If it's too hard, I want you to block it up. I'm going to show you what blocking is right now. Everybody should block if they can't wedge. So let's say I grab the clay from the bucket and I'm just grabbing chunks like this. You didn't wedge it, just a bunch of chunks like that. What you do is you hold it in your hands, you hit it, you turn it, hit it, hit it like this, and you keep going. Hit the edge so it's not going out wide, wide. Hit it like this. What you're trying to do, see all these folds? from all the pieces of clay that, um, that you put together, we want to get rid of those. If you, we're making a slab, okay, slab cup. If you have all these folds when you start making your slab and you throw it out, it's going to rip apart, it's going to fall apart. We want to block it up so that all those folds are gone, okay? So I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm going to keep hitting it until I see mostly all the folds are smoothed out. And that's what's going to happen. If you want to take your finger and go like that a little bit, you can. What I don't want you to do, I don't want you sitting here blocking it up for half an hour. Okay? You can smooth it a little bit, but at some point, you should be done with this. I mean, this only took me about maybe three minutes or less. 
You can do the side if you want. If there's any folds over there, get all those things out. Okay? Tools that you'll need. Wear board, banding wheel, slip, feddling knife, metal rib, paddles are in the boxes also. Um, you're going to need a template, 5 by 10. It must say 5 by 10. Okay? This template is going to be your cup and it's going to wrap around your can. Okay? And it makes this size cup. Alright? Um, before I get on with that, uh, I'll, I'll grab it. If you guys know Brittany Reeser, she made this pot right here. Okay? The method of building that she used is slab cup. Okay? Slab cup. The same method I'm teaching you today. This, instead of being a template that is this small and wrapping it around a can, it was a bigger template. And she made a cylinder out of it. Uh, after Christmas, we'll start doing stuff like this where it's bigger and I teach you how to alter it and change it and do stuff like that. And you can make a really cool form uh, with it. But kind of why I'm showing you this and telling you this now is because I'm giving you more and more advanced stuff to do. More techniques that you can make a pot now. You can make this pot instead of five or six days in coil, you can make it in two or three days in slab. Okay, so it's going to get a little bit faster for you. Um, it's going to uh, maybe get a little bit more fun for you. So make sure you watch this demo and get that information. Let me put this here. Don't pick it up by the handle because I'm afraid it would break. Okay, so making a slab. Block up three pounds of clay or cut two to three inches off a of bag clay. Flatten them with your hand evenly. I take the side of my hand. I start hitting it down like this. I do have some um, students who are a little bit overly aggressive and they start punching it and they get it really thin right away and then when they throw it out to try to stretch it and make a slab, it starts breaking apart. Have a little bit of control, hit it a little bit like this. Now I have to stop and I have to pick it up. Why? See how much it stuck to the table just that little bit? I move it to another spot. I hit it evenly, evenly with the palm of my hand. I'm going to move it already. Hit it down. It's getting a little bit thinner already. But the key to this, major key, is that the thickness of this is even. If it's even, you're going to make a good slab. If by the time you start throwing the slab on the table, if it's thin on one side and thick on the other, that's what's going to happen when you start throwing it. One side's going to be thick, one side's going to be thin. Your cup, instead of being even, it's got a real thick side and a thin side. I'll probably ask you to start over. Okay? You can turn it over if you want. I'm just barely going to hit it a little bit more, and I'm going to start throwing this down. But I'm looking at it the whole time, making sure that it's flat. If you get an air bubble because you didn't wedge, stab the air bubble, smooth it out, and you're good to go. Okay. Notice how my slab doesn't have a bunch of lines and overlaps. It's because I blocked it up. If you have, if you have the lines and overlaps, it's going to just break apart when you throw it down. All right. I'm going to clean off my spot like this. Now, I'm going to make this slab get bigger. When it gets bigger, it's going to get what? Thinner. Okay. The concept behind this is if I take this slab like this and I throw it straight down, it didn't really stretch at all. But if I take it like this and throw it towards myself at an angle to where the tail end hits first, the, it grabs onto the table and it stretches out this way. Okay? I turn it this way like this, I throw it down at an angle like this, it hits the back first, it stretches. It stretches, it stretches, and you just keep doing it, all right? So please watch what I'm doing. This is the people, the part that people struggle on. I'm going to throw it down. Uh, some people also, I don't know why, they throw it down, and when it hits, they're still holding on to it, and then they just rip it in half. So let go of it, let go of it, and throw it down, and it will stretch. So watch the tail end's going to hit first. 
If you hear a loud clap, it's probably going to be stuck to the table. So you might have to move it around, and it does say um, picking up and moving it. So watch, it's going to hit the tail end first. Okay, I can turn it over this way. Tail end first. When it hits that table and grabs onto it, that's what's stretching it. If it's all hitting the table at the same time, it's all sticking to the table. Make sense? Or if you're really cool, you could use the slab roller over there and make it perfect every time. But you're not cool yet. Got to learn this first. Does it look like I'm throwing it really hard? No. Okay. When it's getting a little bit bigger, I really don't have to throw it hard at all. Right? So let's say that you're throwing it and something bad happens and you get a hole in it. Okay? Why? Okay? If you get a hole in it, it's not a big deal. You don't have to start over. Take a piece of clay from the edge. Just because the clay is wet, you can pinch it in. I'm going to pick it up so it doesn't stick to the table. Take a wet piece of clay. Pick it up so it doesn't stick. Take your rib, smooth it in a little bit. If there's a little dip in it like there is now, add a little bit more. Blend it in, smooth it out. Turn it over. There's a little bit on this side. I think it should be okay. A little pinch. We're not gonna use the very edge anyways. I don't wanna do this at the beginning because it will start ripping when I throw it but it's already getting close to the thickness I want. So I'm going to throw it a little bit more. Some people are going to be like, is it ready yet, Mr. Is it, all, is it okay? Is it okay? Is it okay? Is it ready? Is it okay? Is it thin enough? Um, I mean, I can look at it and say, yeah, that's pretty good, and I probably will do that. If you want to check it, when I was in college and in high school, our, our teachers would say, make sure it's a quarter of an inch thick. And I look at a ruler, and I look at that, and I say, how can you even tell? I mean, maybe you could set it like this up against it, maybe. Um, so I came up with one way of doing it. I, I just take my fettling knife and I puncture the slab where it's hitting the table and I put my fingertip up against the slab like this. And then that right there, now I'm not, I'm not asking you to do this. I'm just telling you that if you do this and you check it, that is a quarter of an inch. I'm the man. Okay? But... What's going to happen, some people are going to cut out their square, and they're going to say, is this okay, Mr. Strong? I'm going to say, it's a little bit thick. Throw it a couple more times, this way and that way, put this back on it, and recut it out, and it's going to be a little bit thinner. Okay? I'll remind you of that later. Uh, I did not write this in, your, in your, uh, your handout. Once you go to smooth this, I think it says, make slab even, throw at an angle, turn clay, throw it. Smooth with a rib as you go. Stop when the slab is an, a quarter of an inch. Put it on newspaper. Mm. I'm going to smooth it with my metal rib on both sides while it's on newspaper. Why? Yeah, the, especially when I smooth it with this rib right now, it's very compressed. There's not a lot of bumps. It's very smooth. If I turn it over on the table right now and then smooth the other side, it really sticks to the table. So if I put it on newspaper, it won't stick so much. Questions yet? There's a big giant air bubble right there. Fill it up. You can stab it and then fill it up if you want. Okay, so it's pretty smooth. What's the next step? All right, now, it says here, wet paper towels and bag it up tight. I don't want you to finish at this point. I really would like you to cut this out, put, have the newspaper around the can, and just wrap the slab around the can. If this is like this, you're going to have to put wet newspaper under it, wet newspaper over it and make sure that the bag is all the way around it 
Friday we're partying it up. You might not even be able to do anything to it Friday. So from Thursday till Monday, it's sitting flat. On Monday, it will not curve. So if you can cut this out by the end of the period, even if you didn't smooth it, even if it's too thick, okay, as long as you wrap it around a can that has newspaper on it, you can take it apart on Monday, wet paper towels, double bag, or wet newspaper, double bag, undo it, and then you can keep working on it. But if it stays flat, so number eight where it says use the wet paper towels then, I'd say not. I would try to get this um, um, slab cut out, okay? Um, so right here it says wrap newspaper around the can and tape it. So I'm going to take this off my newspaper because I need it. I'll set it right here on the table softly so it doesn't stick. Just use one sheet of clay, I mean of uh, newspaper. Take this, wrap it around the can. I put it at the end, like at the bottom right there. I put it and I start wrapping it up tight. Don't use like three sheets of paper, it makes it too thick and then your slab won't wrap all the way around it. So I wrap tight, I have tape for you guys, they'll probably be in your toolboxes, maybe on someone else's table. If you can't find any, there's a drawer over there that's labeled as tape. You can look over there for tape. Taped it together. Do not tape the um, the newspaper to the can, okay? Don't tape it to the can. We need the can to move. I'll show you here after I cut it. So I rip off all the excess like this. This here will come out easy. But if you tape it when you started wrapping, wrapping it, it won't come out of the form, okay? My can is ready. Bring this back over. I'm gonna set it here so it doesn't stick when I cut it. This is my template. Make sure that whatever template you use is five by 10, five by 10, it should say it on it. I'm gonna put this up kind of near the edge at the top, but I don't wanna go all the way to the edge because usually people, when they smooth, they smooth the edge thinner. So I'm going up near the top. In your notes, it says to mark it, mark it with a template, then cut it. I don't ever cut it. I used to you know, try to do this fast, and I would be cutting all the way through to the table right now. And what would happen is I'm pressing so hard that my template would start bending in. So it wouldn't be a good rectangle. Right? Take that away. I actually used to have the students do this on their own by measuring out with a ruler. Five by ten. Man, you just couldn't even imagine how awful they measured. It would look like a parallelogram. You know, what is this one called? A rhombus or trapezoid? trapezoid. And uh, I mean, it was just sad. At some point I said, you know what? We'll go with the template. All right? So I have this stuff. This is going to be my cup. See the thickness? Pretty decent thickness. Okay, even if yours is a little bit thick right now, you can throw it a couple more times and then retrace it and cut it again. Where's my can? Okay, so my can will be like that. All I do is stand it up against the can, curve it. What is the can being used for? Support. Yeah, support, molding. And at this point, if you can bag it up with wet newspaper, you're in real good shape. If it's still sitting flat, by, by the time Monday comes, or a few days later, I think you'll be struggling. But we'll see, maybe you'll prove me wrong. Um, it says something after I cut it. Um, what's it say for number three? Save excess for a base, okay? Make sure that you have enough that's gonna be wide enough for a base. Why do I wanna save this for this base? Why save it? So you don't have to do it again. And what about the thickness? Same thickness, okay? Now, this is the most important part of the demo, okay? Very, very important. Check this out, ready? Look, I'm picking this up. I'm picking this up. Oh my gosh. Now look what I'm doing. I'm putting it back in the bucket. 
I spray it down. You guys are awesome. Okay? What What do you think most people do when they do this project? They just leave it at the table. They leave it at the table, sitting there to dry out all period. Then at the end of the period, they go and they put it in there, and then it's dry. The clay's dry. Then the people set it to the side. They don't want to use it. Then all of a sudden, the bucket starts filling up. At Edgewater, uh, there would be days I'd come in there, the bucket is like, the, the lid is like this much above the rim. It's sitting up like this because people kept putting dry stuff in there and nobody wants to use it. Don't do that. Um, if we were rich and we could just waste the clay, that would be you know one thing, but we have to recycle it and we have to keep reusing it. Okay? So we are at um, number four. I wrapped it around a prepared can. Oh, I forgot something. Number one, it says add texture to the slab. Disregard that. We're not doing texture on this one. We're making one that is just blank, no texture. And uh, I'm going to teach you something cool that you can do with the glaze. Okay? On the second one, we'll do uh, pattern and stamping. So you might want to think about some, something to, to bring in for stamping. What's your homework at this point? Bring in a can. Got to bring in a can. You'd be doing this without a can. All right. So I want to start putting this together. I'm going to press this up against my can as newspaper. There will be someone in this class that will be wrapping their slab around a can that has no newspaper. And they'll put it all together, and they'll try to get the can out, and it won't come out. So that's why you got to wrap it in newspaper. All right, this is very important. I made the template to where it would just overlap barely. Okay, We have an overlap. What is the problem with me just trying to blend that in and smooth it right now? It'll be, hmm? It'll, be It'll be a big bump. It won't be the same thickness all around the pot. Okay? So what I want to do is take that off a little bit. But watch what I do. I need everybody to see what I'm doing up here on the board. slab from the top view. This is my overlap right here. Okay? I'm going to take my fettling knife and make a mark across both slabs at an angle like this. Then I'm going to take my fettling knife and follow that angle cutting all the way straight. This is a little bit confusing for some people. Okay? I'll be around to help you out a little bit, but if you can kind of understand what I'm doing, that would be great. When I cut at an angle all the way down, this piece is going to go bye-bye. It's going to come off. This piece is going to go bye-bye and come off. Then leaving this angle here to just barely go over the angle, this will lay here at an angle, and it's going to be a good, solid joint. Okay? <laughs> joint. Oh, my God. Oh, so crazy. Okay. So I'll show you real quick. This is my... Um, my overlap. Now, I made a mark like this. Where my fettling knife ends right here, I'm going to draw a straight line down the side of my pot. Now, these are little details that I did not put in the handout. I can't put every, every little thing. You have to rely a little bit on you know, the fact that you're paying attention and so forth. Okay? So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to start cutting at that angle. As I go down, I'm following this line, at least I'm trying to, at that angle. I take it off. There's an excess piece. That's excess, like that. Okay? That's the angle I want that's going to overlap. I want to put this together. What do I do? Score and slip. Yep, exactly. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to scratch little marks into the spots where I cut it. And it, just to, so you know, this, um, this slab is pretty thin. So I wouldn't go much thinner than this because you might, you might really struggle. But look at the control that I have of holding the slab up. There's my score marks. Okay, I'm gonna take my slip. If you guys ever get the slip out, 
and it's, it's kind of dry, there's no water in it, and you can't mix it up, you need to add some water to it and put it back in the cabinet and let it, uh, let it you know, soak in overnight. I put my slip on that one side. I don't ever put it on two sides because I trust myself. I'm going to take that overlap that was cut at an angle, press it over. It barely goes over the edge like that. I take my finger, I start dragging the clay over, kind of like if it was a coil pot. I'm dragging this clay over here. The slip makes it a little bit wet and it kind of slides around. Drag that. I got a seam on the top where I cut it. I drag that seam in to blend it in and make it one. You guys remember one concept that I keep bringing up when, we make it, when we're making pots? We're trying to create an illusion. An illusion that this piece of clay is one piece of clay. Not that it's a slab that's wrapped around and there's a seam here. So take your tools. I'm going to use this like a wooden rib where I use the edge like this. And I'm scraping that seam so I don't see it. Okay? If you want to reinforce that, where that seam is, where they went put together, you're going to start doing this with slab box. You could take your knife and cut across where the seam was like that and then smooth it out again and it's going to blend all that clay together and it's going to reinforce that seam. I had a seam on the top, I smoothed it out. I got one on the bottom. There's a seam on the bottom where um, my angle cut where the two of them met together. Blend it in, smooth it out. Okay, looks pretty good so far. The illusion, we don't want to see that seam. Uh, that would be part of the grading rubric as far as craftsmanship goes. Okay, now I want to add this base. Um, I think I have enough time. Uh, there, there's going to be two things left for you to do after I do this. And I'm going to show you maybe Monday or Tuesday. But we want to kind of get started with the project. So there's my base. I set my pot over it. Make sure that it's a decent circle, a cylinder. So set it over like that. It all says it right here in the notes. Take your Fennelly knife and trace the outside of the cylinder. I always mark it, trace it, take it off, and then I follow and cut it. I have more control this way by just following the line than trying to cut it while I'm uh, marking around the, the slab. Does anybody have any questions about what I've done so far? Maybe something I missed. Maybe you don't understand kind of exactly what I'm doing. We're making a cup. Wait, what did you mean by reinforce? Reinforce means that all those areas that were cut, that I smooth them out and sometimes even add clay to reinforce that seam so that you don't see it and so it's put together well. Are we going to make a cup with a handle? You will. Your second one will be, um, it, it's a mug if you have a handle. So we're doing one, no texture, just plain, a nice cup. The second one will have a stamping um, pattern texture that we'll talk about in the future. And I'm going to do a handle demo. So here I am scoring where the two are going to be put together. Scratch into it. Don't be wimpy and just leave little marks. Make sure you're cutting into the clay a little bit. Down here, it's going on the outside of this base. I'll pick it up and show you here. Okay? You know, that's all that my video is going to hear. It's like <laughs> the whole time. All right? So that's where I'm going to put it together. Right. There's my slip. This is almost, uh, I'm almost done with this demo, so... There's my slip on the outside edge. I take my cylinder, I lay it on. If there's certain parts that you have to push in to kind of get it to match up with the base, do that because 
your cylinder's not going to be a perfect circle. So I push it in a little bit to match up. Watch what I do to get it to stick. I rock it back and forth a couple times like that. It sticks to it. I turn it over. You can uh, put that away. Oh, jeez. <laughs> not, very, not very quick. That's why I threw it away from you. So once I do that, take the paddle. The paddles are in the drawers. I mean, in the, uh, in the toolboxes. And there's a drawer over there for paddles. Pat it down to get that slip. I'm just doing this very soft to get that slip to stick up into the base and into the cylinder. You probably will have a little bit of overlap. Take this clay and drag it down or drag, if the clay is overlapping from the bottom, drag it up. But you want to blend the clay kind of like if it was a coil and you're dragging part of the coil down. So, almost done. I drag it down. I take my metal rib, I scrape it, I scrape it to the point where I don't see that there's a base there anymore, okay? We want it to look like it's all one piece of clay. When I grade, I'm going to really be looking at your, um, your base and your seam that goes up and down to make sure that you uh, smoothed it out. That would be part of the craftsmanship. I'll have your rubric for you tomorrow. Okay, so I'll smooth that out. Yeah, I just want to show you how I take the can out. Open up the paper a little bit. Don't grab the paper. It won't come out if you grab the paper. If you grab the little part, the little handle thing, it comes out easy. This part here will come out easy. We are going to have a little tiny, thin, very thin coil that goes on the inside here on the seam and one in the very bottom corner um, to just make sure that we don't have a crack in the bottom. I'll go over that next week, okay? Make sure that you have this in your notebook. Make sure tomorrow that when you start that you have it sitting there, that you're using it. Put all the chairs up, please. Thanks a lot. If you see something on the floor, grab it for me. I appreciate it. Bring a can.